Hi, Dr. Glenn, welcome to Super EFT. Welcome to Super EFT. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. I am a practitioner of Emotional Freedom Technique, which is tapping on acupressure points on the body and adding love, acceptance, and forgiveness into your psyche and into your body um, with the method of tapping and talking and feeling about some emotions you have about life circumstances, trauma, grief, uh, physical accidents of carrying pain in the body. So if you look it up, EFT is becoming a household name in successful interventions of all kinds of trauma, um, including with children. Um, you really can tap on anything because it changes the frequency in the body and it has an immediate impact on your nervous system. So I am pioneering this show and um, inviting guests to just talk about their life, events in their life, and how it's affected them and impacted them. And we will pause the story and do some tapping. Um, first of all, I'm very excited to have Glenn here to give us, shed some light on the science of why EFT actually works. So first of all, um, tapping on acupressure points and doing percussive tapping um, could you tell us a little bit about acupuncture and Chinese medicine? Sure. Where it came from was the Chinese were very organized and they wrote everything down and the emperor told them to write down all their observations about war injuries because they, and they started to notice patterns and, and the whole acupuncture system comes from that organization of observations about the patterns and we know now with you know, the modern science that, that all of those acupressure points are actually very specific, uh, specific anatomical points in the body. There's a certain histology or structure, which is a neurovascular bundle, where there's an artery, a vein, and a nerve that penetrates through a layer of fascia under the skin. So you have the fascia is like an insulating layer, and then you have a neurovascular bundle that's a, a, like a wire, an electrical conductor. And so these points on the, on the skin, on the outside of the body, then bring to the surface a particular patterning of information that comes from inside the body. And so it's not just a local pattern, it's, it's a, the whole body that shows up in every part, in a sense, like the ear, there's a point for every part of the body on each ear. Or like we see in neurology of the eye, the whole body is represented, or the homunculus in the brain that shows up again and again. So there's these, these uh, holographic patterns where we're seeing on the skin as like a film representing the inside of the body in acupressure and acupuncture points, just like the sensorium, our sense of the external world, is how that external world shows up on our skin and the special senses like vision and, and hearing. And why is um, acupuncture effective in connecting the dots and opening energy pathways? Or can you talk about that? Well, the, those energy pathways that the dots are along, it's called the meridians or channels, are now known to be uh, like direct current wires, not completely insulated wires, like in, in a, a technical circuit, but uh, in the body they're, they're channels that are also connected to the neighboring channels to some degree, but they are specific channels that, that run through not only the skin, but the deeper tissues, and therefore into certain particular specific deep organs, like the large intestine meridian actually runs through the large intestine, and so particular points will reflect the energy of that deep internal part of that organ. Mm -hmm. So how long would you say this, this method has been around? Like 5,000 years? Yeah. Long time? <laughs> yeah, a long time. So would you say the Chinese consider it just a science and accepted medicine? It's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I mean, and modern, the modern uses in mainland China now are somewhat limited compared to, you know, the tr actual traditional approach. It was a complete system of medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we hear about it being used for, for anesthesia, and it's certainly Wow. Safer than chemical anesthesia, and it works. Wow. But the 
it can be used to treat any kind of, of imbalance because everything is energy. The chemistry moves according to the energy. So our structure moves according to how the chemi chemistry builds up and flows. So if we change the energy, that changes the chemistry, changes the structure. And similarly with our thinking, our mind, the spirit, if we can change those patterns, our thought patterns, which you're working with with the FT, that changes the energy, which changes the chemistry, which changes the structure over time. Wonderful. So how can you imagine um, uh, using needles for acupuncture? How can you imagine that tapping on those points is as effective or can be effective? Yeah, it's, it's, you're, you're stimulating the same pathway. It's a different signal, but it's certainly an adequate signal to, to uh, get the body's attention. If you can feel it, there's, there's the nerve is being affected, the energy is being affected. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, you're creating, I think, an anchor in the, in the sensory experience, like they call it in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, uh, an anchor in, by having that, uh, that sensory experience associated with the other thoughts and other energies that are going on at that time. So that, what an anchor does is it, it, it puts it into our memory. We don't right. remember everything, right. but it makes sure that you're, even if you're not consciously remembering it or intending to, mm -hmm. your body remembers it. Right. Our, our subconscious processes way more information than our conscious does. So that's why EFT is considered energy medicine, mm -hmm. and this modality as energy medicine. Um, can you speak a little bit about uh, neurotransmitters and what we're doing while we're tapping and interrupting that system by, by doing the tapping and using our mind to jog the memories of what actually happened? So could you say a little bit about what's happening and how we're affecting our neuropathways? Uh, that, that one I, I'm going to give some more thought to. You know, it, the neurotransmitters you know, certainly are being affected. Uh, any, any, all of our conscious functions and subconscious functions are, are it's, a, it's our basic communication between cells in the nervous system. Taking a, a response that's been locked in, that's 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 right. uh, you know a chronic stress, a, a reaction to some extreme stress in the past, your system is still holding on to that memory and still reacting to it. And if you're now tapping into that with associating it with a state of I'm okay, I'm going to survive this, I can relax now and stop yeah. my stress Bend response, <laughs> that certainly could then stop the production, the overproduction of stress-related neurohormones right. and, and, you know, like adrenaline and, the, and noradrenaline and that whole stimulatory mm -hmm. uh, excitement kind of right. pathway. And that's one of the biggest successes around EFT is that it actually permanently shifts the stress response in the body in almost immediately after addressing the issue. Um, that's why basically tapping on the acupressure points and using our psyche to remember and putting our loving care and attention, attention on the issues and acknowledging the pain or stress that we did feel, um, we are essentially reprogramming ourselves. So this is changing our mind in our body. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're able to leave that behind and move forward with freedom from that situation. We're no longer s enslaved in the stress response. So, well, thanks for sharing a little on that. Um, uh, my name is Varushka, and I have been working with people and with groups of people for over eight years now. And uh, I'm really passionate about this process, so hoping that this will help you in um, having insight in your life and tap along if you feel like it. You see us tapping, just repeat the words. It's a call and a response type of thing. So I'd like to invite you, um, if there's something you would like to share about that we could, that I could lead you and tap on this issue or memory. Sure. Uh, yeah, one of my early memories is <clears throat> with my mother um. So actually, what I like to do is, since you are um, bringing up this memory, we'll just start tapping around here as we're talking about it, because you are like reawakening right, right. the cells in this memory. Yeah, so my memory uh, is of, of uh, what we called nyerping, which is 
was rolling around on the floor together, you know, just hugging each other. And, and I think that that was my mom's solution to me wanting to nurse. It's like, okay, we're gonna make a game of it and do something different, a substitute. It's like, you know, instead of smoking a cigarette, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna suck on this candy or something. And so that's the part I remember, and I, I suspect that it was about weaning and that, that you know, that I missed that contact with, with my mom. So you actually remember? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I don't remember the nursing part or stopping <laughs> nursing. I remember nerping our game that we played wow. rolling around on the floor. So how, how is this still affecting you? It's just one of my earliest memories, so I suspect that it's, you know, that it's a significant indicator of my, you know, my psyche development, my, my need for touch, mm -hmm. uh, my body relaxes with touch, is something that's, that's always been uh, kind of an issue for me in terms of my developmental stage uh, patterning. And so when I think of it now, I, I, I will uh, just, I'll transform it in my thinking to feel my mom's presence. She's, she's passed now, she's no longer in her body here, but she's here and I feel her and I, so I can think of her and feel her presence within. Mm -hmm. So would you say some, some feelings you might have had for a long time would have been like rejection and being denied something that was nurturing and loving, loving touch? Yeah, I think I mean, so. Could you yeah. maybe list three feelings and beliefs as a result of being cut, weaned? Um, feelings and beliefs. What, what comes to mind is, is just more scenarios that, that were really uh, painful and characteristic as a child. When, when, uh, when I want to be closer to, to you know, a girl, I would just freeze. And I think that's a common experience, but you know, it doesn't make it any less painful when we experience that. And what about um, siblings? Was there, were there siblings after you? No, nope, uh, just two older brothers. Okay, so it wasn't like someone was taking your place? No, I was the baby. I was always the ba her baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you have any other uh, residual beliefs or feelings of how that showed up in your life otherwise? Possibly, possibly related to seizures. Possibly, not certain of that, but I have some mm -hmm. inkling that, that uh, the times that I've had seizures, many times would be related to that sense of, of you know, desire for closeness, but a sense of, of just feeling separate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would you do you have any type of belief that she cut you off too early, or was it? A reasonable time when she could. Um, I didn't have any any you know formed belief about that earlier in life. Uh, my my intellectual sense is for sure that 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 it would have been a good thing to to breastfeed as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I just I know that that it, it increases intelligence and you know adaptability of the child. So well, at least you were breastfed. <laughs> I was. Somewhat. Thank God for that. Yes. And when I was weaned, I was fortunate enough that our family physician recognized that I started having a, 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 a pretty strong uh, allergy to dairy, to cow dairy, and he got me, got my parents to, uh, to put me on raw goat's milk. Oh wow! So that was. I'm, I feel so blessed about that. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, none of it is stuff I'm like you know, feeling angry about, but it's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All right, well, are you willing to do a little tapping round about it? Okay. Okay. Um, I do some of the uh, traditional Gary Craig where I like to rub on uh, under the collarbones. It just kind of anchors that theme. And I also like to cross my legs just to keep the pathways open. So if you want, you can close your eyes. When I, when, with that setup, when I changed posture and like I'm getting ready, I felt my breath go into that 10 second relaxation cycle. I felt like a spontaneous, not thinking about it, but I noticed it, uh, starting to take a deeper breath. So yeah. 
Yeah, it is the like mm -hmm. we're giving the permission of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And and even by talking about it, you're already setting the intention that I'm ready to release any remaining stress about that time, you know. So our body's finally going, Oh, I can let that go. So I'm gonna start rubbing on the um, sore sore spot is what it's officially called. Mm -hmm. And then you'll repeat after me. Even though I'm afraid I was weaned way too early. Even though I'm afraid I was weaned way too early. And part of me is still really upset about it. And part of me is still really upset about it. I lost some love. I lost some love. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love and accept myself anyway. I love and accept myself anyway. Breathe. And across the chest one more time. Are you rubbing? Mm -hmm. Even though part of me is still carrying grief. Even though part of me is still carrying grief. That I was weaned way too early. That I was weaned way too early. I was not ready. I was not ready. I needed my mother. I needed my mother. I needed that form of nourishment. I needed that form of nourishment. It's okay. It's okay. I'm giving myself the compassion I needed. I, I'm giving myself the compassion I needed. I couldn't tell my mother. I couldn't tell my mother. I was too young. I was too young. I was too little. I was too little. I'm choosing to forgive myself. I'm choosing to forgive myself. And forgive my mother. And forgive my mother. For not being able to state my needs. For not being able to state my needs. Breathe. Cross the chest one more time. Cross the chest so I cross the midline. You know what? It really doesn't matter. It's kind of tender and sore everywhere. I like to just go one, two, okay. Okay. three. Um, and if you're not comfortable with that, you can just tap. It's still going to make a difference. So the last time we'll say, this remaining pain. This remaining pain. About being weaned. About being weaned. About being cut off from my mother. About being cut off from my mother. About being cut off from love. About being cut off from love. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love and respect myself. I love and respect myself. Just as I am right now. Just as I am right now. Breathe. <sighs> so that's just only the setup phrase. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Do you feel a little tender? Tender here? Tender internally. I like felt a couple there. layers, like I moved deeper to a couple layers. As I felt a shift Subtle in bit, you, yeah. like a like a like almost a compassion, mm -hmm. like a yeah, nourishing more compassion towards the baby. access to my own tenderness. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to tap. I like to use two fingers. I'm going to tap inside of the eyebrow. And just so you know, you can't do anything wrong. Even if you tapped on one spot the whole time, it's the intention that counts and that we're creating an electric pulse in our nervous system that's breaking the old habits. This old pain, and if you want, you can close your eyes too. Okay. This old pain? About being weaned. About being weaned. Way too soon. Way too soon. Tap on the side of, of the eye. Okay. Oh, the Tap side of the eye. Okay. Remaining sadness. Remaining sadness. I was not ready. I was not ready. Tap under the eye. I wasn't ready to be cut off from my mom. I wasn't ready to be cut off from my mom. Underneath the nose, Mom, I need you. Mom, I need you. I need you to be close. I need you to be close. I need to be close to you. I need to be close to you. Under the lips. Mom, I need your nourishment. Mom, I need your nourishment. I am not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm still too young. I'm still too young. I need the goodness. I need the goodness. Coming from your body. Coming from your body. This is health to me. This is health to me. Top of the chest. This is wellness to me. This is wellness to me. I need the wholesome wellness. I need the wholesome wellness. Of your milk. Of your milk. Your sustenance. Your sustenance. Your warmth. Your warmth. Your breath. Your breath. Your love. Your love. That's the loving nourishment I need. That's the loving nourishment I need. Breathe. And now we're going to do top of the rib. This old disappointment. This old disappointment. This old shock. This old shock. Of being cut off. Of being cut off. From my mother. From my mother. Underneath the armpit. Same area. And we we have this um, the pressure points and meridians on both sides equally in the body. So 
you, you can just favor the side that works for you. We're still going to have the benefit. Okay. Being cut off. Being cut off. So much stress. So much stress. What did I do? What did I do? Did I do anything wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Is this punishment? Is this punishment? Breathe. <sighs> Tap inside of the wrist. How are you feeling? Good. Do you have any kind of memory? Any kind of um, thought? Are you making any kind of connection? Yeah, just again, feeling more freedom internally, deeper opening, more relaxation. Okay, let's tap inside of, we're gonna tap on the side of the nail bed on the finger, and we're gonna go down the fingers. And let's have a little dialogue with your mom. Keep your eyes closed. Mom, I love you. Mom, I love you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You didn't know. You didn't know. That I wasn't ready. That I wasn't ready. Next finger. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. That I didn't know. That I didn't know. What was going on. What was going on. I took it really personal. I took it really personal. Next finger. Part of me thought. Part of me thought. You were abandoning me. You were abandoning me. I must, abandoning me. I must have done something wrong. I must have done something wrong. Next finger. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believed. I believed. This was about me. This was about me. Next finger. Breathe. <sighs> I'm going to tap on the karate chop. Okay. Right here. Mom, I'm so sorry. Mom, I'm so sorry. That you believed. That you believed. That was the best thing at the time. That was the best thing at the time. When it really was premature. When it really was premature. I really still needed your nourishment. I really still needed your nourishment. I was a growing baby. I was a growing baby. I needed your love. I needed your love. Warmth. Warmth. And nourishment. And nourishment. Breathe. We're going to tap on top of the head with both of your hands. I'm open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibility that right now, that right now, I can release. I can release any remaining pain. Any remaining pain and disappointment. And disappointment that I'm still holding. That I'm still holding on any level. On any level. Physically. Physically. Psychologically. Psychologically. Or in my heart. Or in my heart. About you cutting me off. About you cutting me off. Having anything to do. Having anything to do with loss of love. With loss of love. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. To the both of us. To the both of us. Breathe. <sighs> okay. How do you feel? Great. Feel like you made any connection, body mind? Yeah, I feel more connected with myself. Less in some kind of you know, what was unconscious, but feel the, the release of it, it's, uh, some kind of defensive mode. Do you want to do um, just one more round for fun? Okay. Okay. I'm going to tap inside the eyebrow. Okay. 